Drinking from the spring of living water every Monday during the Bible study of the Deeper Christian Life Ministry is such an enriching experience that affords you an unforgettable encounter with God and His Word. The vibrant general superintendent of the ministry, Pastor W.F. Komui, is a renowned minister and teacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, having traveled worldwide for the propagation of the gospel. Each contact with his ministration gives you the privilege of joining our first year and expectant congregation to receive the bread of life, which satisfies the body, soul, and spirit through anointed messages filled with unction of the Holy Ghost. This message will transform you and help to deepen your walk with God and your service to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sit back as we present to you the unchanging Word of God through His minister, whose entire life revolves around the preaching of the gospel of salvation and purity of life in preparation for life here and hereafter. Let's welcome Pastor W.F. Kumui. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for bringing us together once again tonight for the glorious thing as well as a solemn, serious thing that you brought us together before you in your very presence to come and listen to your words, authored, inspired by your spirit, and preserved for us in your kindness and goodness so we can learn. And in learning, we come to be more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And the work you've committed into our hands, the great commission you've given us. As a result of the study of this word, and praying each in, and practicing each out, we'll become people who are sound in the faith. And people who will be able to tell all the people, this is the mind of the Lord. And as we reveal the mind of the Lord unto them by your spirit, or by your grace, or by your strength within us, they will bend the knee before you. They will surrender their lives to you. They become converts of the Lord Jesus Christ, followers, disciples of the Lord and subjects of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, so that they and us will inherit the kingdom of God together in Jesus' name. Open the pages of the scriptures to us tonight once again, and we pray that the things we learn will be unforgettable. Make it work effectually, effectively in every heart, every life that lives today. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We can sit down. I welcome every one of you to the Bible study tonight. It's always a great joy to come and look at the Word of God together. And we're taking our time, by the way, as we go through the book of Daniel. There's so much in this book. From what is reaching there, for the narratives, the stories, and for the parts that each of the people played. There's so much to learn. We've looked at chapter 4 from verse 1 all through to verse 4, 37. And what we've done is we've taken what we call a panoramic view, a general view, a broad outlook from verse 1 all through to verse 27 and then from verse 28 all through to verse 37 but i'm going to do something there's some parts of the chapter that we need to look at it's like now we want to do what we call a microscopic study you take a telescope and then you look very far away and you see many many things so ahead that's the use of the telescope and then because of the importance of those different, different, different parts, you take the microscope. And then you look very intently and very closely at some of the things you missed out when you took the telescopic view. That's why tonight we're coming back. You might think we're going to chapter 5. It's too soon. It's too early to go to chapter 5. 
we need to put some pieces together here. And so tonight we're looking at Daniel chapter 4 from verse 19 to verse 27. Look at your Bible as we read. Then Daniel was spelled as Shazer, was astonished. That's the old English word for astonished, amazed, surprised. He was shocked for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. I'm sure you're familiar with that. In our local community, when somebody is talking to you, and somebody is saying, he had a dream, and the dream was very bad. You say, what's that dream? Tell me. Oh, he says, I don't want to tell the details. They say that this will happen to my, tell me out loud, to my enemy. Actually, it means that this is what I saw. And this is what they said is coming to me. But then he doesn't want to accept it. He doesn't want to say it will happen to him. He said, this is what he said will happen to my enemy. That's exactly the language Daniel is using here. He said, this dream is terrible. The interpretation is shocking. And the only thing I can wish for the king, the Padesa, is that the interpretation thereof be to thine enemies. In verse 20, the tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sides thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, it is thou, O king, think about that, the courage, the uncommon faithfulness of a prophet, to be able to face King Nebuchadnezzar and to be able to say, did you hear that the watcher, the angel, the holy one from heaven said, cut down the tree. King, I'm here to tell you, the God of heaven has taken a decision, has made a decree over you. It is thou, O king, thou hast grown and become strong. And for thy greatness, thy greatness is grown and reaches unto heaven, and thy dominion to the edge of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Heal down, cut the tree down. And destroy it, yet leave the stalk, the stem of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass of the tender grass of the field. And let it be wet for the dew of heaven, and let his portion be for the bees of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation of King. This is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the King, that they shall drive thee from men. Think about this to start with. Which prophet in this land, which preacher in this land, which pastor or priest in this land of ours, or in this continent of Africa or beyond, will be able to face a Nebuchadnezzar, a prince, a president, a governor, a rich man, a lofty and a high man today, and be able to say, This is the interpretation of great man. It shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, 
and it shall wedge thee for the dew of heaven. And seven times, seven years shall pass over thee till thou know. What was he telling him? You seem ignorant of the Most High. You seem ignorant of the great majesty and the glory and the power of the Most High. This is coming on you. And it's going to stay until you know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth thee to whosoever he will. And whereas he commanded to leave the stump, the stem of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be shown to thee after that thou shalt have known. Nebuchadnezzar, this is not just a matter of time. Seven years will pass. But the seven years is just one part of the story. Until you would have known that the heavens do rule. That was the interpretation. But Daniel did not stand up and then run away, thinking, I wonder how I could have said that to Nebuchadnezzar. I wonder how I could have had the courage, the conviction, the commitment to even stand before the Padmeza and to tell him what I told him. He didn't turn away. He said, that is the dream. That is the interpretation. But now, before I leave, I'm going to counsel you. I know you are not expecting counseling. All you wanted was interpretation. But I have not finished my duty, my responsibility until I give you counsel. Verse 27. Where, wherefore, O King, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break up thy sins by righteousness, and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a letting of thy tranquility, of thy peace, of thy quietness. The prophet's call is a rewarding call, but there are times when the prophet is called upon to deliver a serious, solemn, weighty message. The preacher's commission is a very high commission, a holy commission, a heavenly commission, with great rewards, but it's not always an easy task. To go to all the people that the Lord will send him and to speak whatsoever the Lord will command him. There are times when the prophet or the preacher or the pastor is sent to bear and to deliver heavy tidings to the high and lofty among men. That's where a farming of real preachers that was that that was their salt. In this country, in this continent, this continent is filled with churches, with pastors, with preachers, with evangelists, with proclaimers of the Bible. But everything looks psychological, motivational. We never have any word for the wicked. And the people who are fighting corruption in the world, they do a better job than the pastors and the preachers and the evangelists in this land, in this continent. Those uh, people who are fighting corruption, they stand up firm and they do not mind, they do not worry who they have to point to or arrest or check up on. And while the preachers have they are shaking knees and trembling hearts and trembling voices and they cannot stand up like Daniel to challenge the corruption in the land. The people who do not claim to be Christians, who do not claim to be preachers of the gospel, they are doing a great job, they are doing a better job. If Daniel were alive today, Daniel would do a greater job than anybody fighting corruption in any land, any part of the world. Because that man teach the will of God and did not mind what the consequence might be. My prayer, your prayer, our prayer together is that God will raise up Daniels. And you might be the Daniel. That's why God brought you here tonight. For you to see somebody like you, a man of flesh and blood like you, 
And all he did, he did by grace. He did by the power of the Spirit of God. And the Lord is saying, Daniel has come and gone. You are the one there today, the brother and the sister. And you know, sometimes as you look at this, our nation, and then you see that a man was the chairman of, you know, the, the commission, the, and that's the ministry that is fighting the corruption. And you said, this man is bold, and this man is courageous. And then you replace that man with a woman. And then you say, I thought the man was bold. This woman is another thing. Bold. Authoritative. And then wanting to crush corruption anywhere she finds the corruption. And what a lesson for us who say we are saved, we are sanctified, we have the double work of grace, of salvation, and of sanctification, and we have the power of the Holy Ghost within us. And now, when it comes to fight sin, corruption, and evil, even in our local, local house fellowship, in our local zone, in our local district, what kind of job are we doing when it comes to preaching the gospel and presenting the unadulterated word of God to the people in our community? What are we doing? Daniel says we can do better, we're going to do better. And we're not going to look at any face and look at anyone and tremble and shake before anyone. If Daniel, your senior brother, could stand before the Nebuchadnezzar today, I believe you will stand. And so, we need preachers today, those who will declare the word of God, and they'll be able to say, I am sent to thee with heavy tidings. There may be times when entire audiences might say, This is an hard saying. Who can bear it? When the preacher knows that his hearers would say, This is a hard saying. Who can receive it? He might be tempted to say, This is a hard blessing. Who can receive it? Our calling, our commission will not always attract the praise of men. Natural. Natural men, carnal men, are so committed to doing evil that they will hate and reject the preacher or the evangelist rather than hate their sin and repent of their evil. That the man who is sent from God with a message originating from heaven must not fear any man on earth. The fear of man brings a snare. Such fear leads the preacher to faithfulness and brings God's judgment upon him. It is easier, it is even better to suffer temporary wrath of man than to incur the eternal wrath of God. Rather displease man than displease God. Why? Because if men decide to persecute you, God can deliver you from the wrath of all men. But on the other hand, if God decrees to punish you for your faithfulness, for your instability, for your fear of man, no man can deliver you from his hand. Look at this Daniel. Daniel's commission was not always easy, but he had enough grace. You'll get the grace today. And he had enough courage, that courage is coming to you now. He had enough grace and courage to discharge his duty faithfully. Called to be a servant of God, he was never a slave of man. Nebuchadnezzar gave him a scholarship. He was never a slave of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar fed him free for three years. He was never a slave of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar tested him and shaped the pressure and a baby go with all the others. And Nebuchadnezzar gave him distinction that was ten times better than the rest of them. Nebuchadnezzar gave him a certificate, but he was never a slave of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar gave him a job, a position in the palace of Babylon, but he never became a slave of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar promoted him after he had given him a job. 
The promotion did not make him to become subservient a slave. He was never a slave of Nebuchadnezzar. Men may do something for us. That's our right. You are a citizen of your country. And if you've gone to school and you've read, you pass. That doesn't make you a slave of that teacher that gave you the pass mark. You go to a school and you have a certificate. Good. That's because you studied and God helped you. That doesn't make you a slave of that educational institution. And then you go for an interview and you have a job. Very good. It's because you went through the interview, you passed. That's why you got the job. That doesn't make you a slave of the employer. You see, there are people easily become slaves. He helped me. He gave me a certificate. He gave me a job. He gave me some money. He gave me promotion. He gave me whatever. And then they become slaves. But Daniel remained a child of God, a servant of God. And Daniel became a, a person that stood firm for the truth. Never a slave of man. You will not be a slave. Slave trade is over. But you see, there are people that still have the heart, the mind, the attitude of slavery. But in the case of Daniel, don't you remember? They were captured from their land and they were brought to Babylon. They said, you can capture me and even chain my hand and you can bring me and take me in the chariot and take me from Jerusalem and Judah and bring me to Babylon. You are never going to take my heart, my soul, my mind, my conviction. Captive, I am free. And that is what